So we have this front room where we have the piano and we're going to put some shelves along the back wall. The idea was to build them out of plywood and then put facing on it to give the shelves support and make them look really nice. So I did up the plans and the cut lists and got everything all ready to go. As always, you begin with the breaking down of the plywood. There were a lot of repeated cuts because the shelves are all the same width and the side pieces are the same width and so there were a lot of cuts that were the same all the way through. So there was actually a whole lot of time of doing this exactly. So once I had them all ripped down, I made what I call a storyboard. There's going to be a whole lot of repeated measurements going on for the shelves. And for the side pieces, I wanted to cut dados into them for the shelves to sit in. And each one needed to be in the exact same place. So I took a piece of uh, cut off and I measured out where all those dados were going to be. And I marked them on a board. And I'm going to use that board to mark all of the rest of the boards so they'll be the same all the way through. Once I had the storyboard all written up, I just lined up the same end every single time and made sure that it was square and even. And I transferred those marks to the board I needed to cut the grooves in. So as long as I was careful, every single board had the same measurements and the same marks. After making the marks, I'd then draw lines all the way across using the square so they're good and straight. So what I was trying to do here is cut three quarter inch dados into the shelf sides for the shelves to sit in. And so those have to be consistent. And I came up with a system that I thought might work. And it involves two boards at different widths. And I'll see if I can explain what I was doing here. I have one that's three and a half. One that's three and a quarter. Why is there a quarter inch difference in them? Because I can only get a bit that's a half inch wide. That's the only one that I have. So I have to make two passes. So you measure from the center to the outside of the guide, which in my case is exactly three inches. And so I know that my blade needs to be three inches from wherever it is that I'm cutting, plus half of the width of the bit. That's why I have two boards that are a quarter inch apart, because I have to make the first cut and then make another pass a quarter inch past it to get my three quarter inch dado. There you see how it works. Where I drew the line is three inches away from where I need to cut. Ish. Because of the width of the bit. And then I move the board to that second line. Which is a quarter of an inch further away. And I make the second pass. Which finishes out my three quarter inch data. The best idea here is to err on the side of being too small because you don't want it to be too big. And then you can tap the board over and finish out that dado to where it's a tight fit. But 
I did this what seemed like about a thousand times for each shelf in each side piece because I'm building this in three different shelving units that'll fit across the wall. So there were actually six sides. And I believe there are seven shelves on each side. So 21 shelves. Of course, the obligatory sanding. Now these are going to be painted. It's nice plywood. It's decent. But you got to get it smooth. Uh, got to break down the edges. So there's no splinters, no sharpness. To me, sanding is the most tedious thing ever. I have this big old paintbrush just for this purpose. So when it came to cutting the shelves, there were so many that were the same width. As you can see, there's a two by four that is attached to the table. So it's just a stop block. And that way you could just grab it, not have to measure, put it up against the stop block, make a cut, and they're all the exact same length. One issue I did have is the saw doesn't quite reach the full width of these shelves. Oh, booms, but not quite. But it was so tiny that I just took a little Japanese handsaw and a couple of little cuts, and we're good to go. More sanding, of course. I think I spent about a year just sanding things. This was actually super awkward to try to put together by myself because they're long and they're wide and there's a lot of pieces that have to fit into a lot of grooves. Really probably should have been a job for more than just me. So I put glue in all the grooves and got them all set in there. It's super floppy at this point, but put some nails in it just to hold it into place while the glue dries. And I really, I put nails on the outside first because I could see where the wood was then. And then I used a straight edge to kind of show me so I didn't miss and get nails sticking out sideways. And I made the stretcher pieces to go on the end uh, just to try to shore up the top and the bottom. And then I flipped it over, added glue to those grooves and my fingers. Popped it into place, which again takes a little finesse. And nailed it together as well. And I used the same method where I put a nail on the outside and on the inside and then used a straight edge to put the nails all the way across. Not bad. And once that glue dried, they were super stable already. I did decide <clears throat> to add this piece on the back. And I just cut strips, put some glue on it, and nailed them into place uh, to hold it while the glue dried. And the, the, there were a couple of reasons for this. That's gonna add stability to the back of the shelf to keep it from sagging. And it was gonna give me a place to also run screws into the wall to hold those shelves to the wall a little better. And I did that on every shelf. We knew we were going to take this floor out eventually, so I measured where the shelves needed to sit because I want them to sit on the subfloor instead of this floor so we, when we take this floor out, the shelves aren't sitting on top of it. 
And that way, whatever floor we put in, we just run up to the shelves and that's all we need. So I marked it all the way across. Now this is a, a laminate flooring. It's one reason we want to get rid of it. Um, it's old, so it's a pretty tough cut. So as you can't see in this wonderful shot of the back of my head, I'm using a cordless circular saw to go along that line and I set it to just deep enough to cut through the laminate and not the subfloor so we didn't just have part of the floor falling into the basement. I couldn't get all the way to the wall with the circular saw so I just used a multi-tool. Which is not easy to do in this case. I also used it on the molding and the trim to cut the lines I needed to on it. Make everything straight. Turns out an eight foot tall shelf won't stand up in an eight foot tall room. It hits the ceiling before you get it up there. So I have to cut a few inches off the top so I can stand them up. After chopping off the top, it stands up. Never mind the gap at the top. Once I got them all in, it was a tight, tight fit, which means I got it just right. Might have taken a little finesse. I marked where the studs were on the wall, pre-drilled some holes, and screwed those braces to the studs. So this will hold them good and steady and they're pretty much going to be there forever. So to fill in the parts that I cut off, <laughs> I added a piece to the top. And I have resorted to my favorite Durham's rock hard water putty to do some filling. On these top pieces, I filled in, and then we'll sand them down, and they're going to be painted, so you won't be able to even tell. Now, sanding inside of the house, it's an interesting job. I'll just tell you right now, I would protect the rest of your house as much as you possibly can from all the dust, because you'll be cleaning it for years. So I bought a giant roll of this thin plastic a long time ago. It comes in a cardboard box in a roll and you just roll it out however much you need. And I use it on a regular basis for things like this. I just taped it up around where I was going to sand and that kept most of the dust inside of that plastic area. And no, it's not a kill room. After applying the putty, did some sanding, took a few coats on this top filler piece. I don't know what you want to call it. My mistake, cover. I didn't like that the ceiling was textured at the top. I wanted it to be smooth like the rest of the shelves, so I actually just bought some press board here, some masonite is what we always called it. Used some construction adhesive. threw it up on the ceiling and 
and put a few nails in it just to hold it in place while that hardens. The nails don't hold all that great, but it was enough. So after all the sanding, because I did more once it was in and set up and everything, I had to clean up the shelves. So I vacuumed them and I wiped them down with a damp cloth just to get them ready for paint. I wanted to fill any gaps. So I just, I ran some caulk, used a putty knife. I didn't want a rounded corner really. I just didn't want the gaps. And then I used some primer and put a primer coat on. And then painted over top of that. Took more than one coat because I wanted it to have a good finish. Some places have three coats. And I knew the books were going to go on and off of it, so I wanted it to be durable. Then I glued and put nails into the facing hardwood. I used poplar in this case, since I'm painting it. I also took the crown molding that I had pulled off the wall and put across the top. I also put glue across the front and put the front facing hardwood on which again does two things. One, it covers the plywood edge and makes the shelves look nice because of the hardwood facing. And it also is gonna hold that shelf from sagging. It'll add stability to it, just like the one in the back. I get the edge lined up, tack it in, go to the other edge, line it up, because I want to make sure the top of the hardwood is level with the top of the shelf. I don't want to lip. And in the middle, if the shelf is not exactly straight or it's sagging or whatever, I can push it up to be level with the hardwood. And once that glue, dr glue dries, it'll be good and solid. Then the task of priming and painting the hardwood on the front. My wife loaded it with all the books. she was pleased with how it came out. We still have to paint the room and change the flooring out and there's many things to do in the house but these shelves they'll be here forever and I think they'll only add value to the room. Thanks for watching.